Hello, welcome to the Jenkins Documentation Office Hours. Uh, this is today is February 22nd. This is the EU US edition. And today, uh, at this point, we have myself, Kevin Martins, and Bruno Rashton joining as well. Uh, if anyone shows up during the session, we welcome in as always. Uh, otherwise, we'll go over the agenda and go from there. Uh, and so on the agenda, so uh, we had the latest LTS release yesterday, uh, version 2.440.1, uh, Contributor Summit and Fostum Recap, some notes about Google Summer of Code, uh, housekeeping about uh, Asia Docs Office Hours, uh, Jenkins Community Awards. Uh, I wanted to note the JIRA upgrade for issues.jenkins.io. Uh, it might not be something that directly affects documentation in the moment, but this is not something that's important for everyone in the community to be aware of. Uh, version documentation for Jenkins.io, just some updates there. Uh, the Maven and Python tutorial revamps have been merged. Now we're looking at next steps. The admin password reset instructions and uh, sponsors, attributions, uh, basically just making sure that we have sponsor page uh, and where that's at. Uh, anything else that you want to throw on the agenda, Bruno, while we're here? Or No, I'm, go. I'm good. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, great. So starting off, so again, yesterday was uh, the uh, latest baseline LTS release. So 2.440.1, that's the start of a new baseline. Um, thanks to everyone that helped out with the release itself. Uh, the release went well, uh, no issues with the Jenkins core release. There were some issues with the upgrade guide, which may have uh, messed up the Jenkins.io builds. But thanks to Chris Stern and Damien Deportal, they were able to re recognize and uh, find the issue, resolve it, take care of things very quickly and efficiently, and got everything squared away so that the release and uh, everything else could go out accordingly. Um, so there's no uh, issues now. They've been addressed. But um, as a result, we're going to make sure, or I'm going to make sure that uh, going forward, the upgrade guide has a screenshot included as well as the change log. So, um, Learning experience, uh, yeah, we'll get we'll uh, we'll do our best to make sure that everything goes smoothly from here on out. Uh, Contributor summit, Fosden uh, recap stuff. So I'm working on a blog post right now. Uh, I've got a Google Doc started and shared around with the other officers and community team members to just if they have any insights or uh, content they want to share, add, put in there, make sure it's uh, made available, etc. But right now, uh, we're looking to publish it probably sometime between tomorrow and Monday, depending on uh, what kind of actions we're getting. Uh, if no one's adding anything, that's okay. They don't need to. We have enough content there. Um, I just wanted to give everyone the chance to add their two cents if they have it. That's all. So, um, yeah, uh, more to come on that probably within the next few days that will be published, though. Uh, in terms of Google Summer of Code, so uh, we got confirmation that Jenkins has been accepted as a Google Summer of Code organization. So super excited about that. Um, really great to see. It's another uh, another chapter in the journey that we've been on with Google Summer of Code now for the last, well, we've been doing it for a while now. So really, really excited to continue that. Um, we're going to have a blog post for that announcement and uh, we'll update the carousel on the website with that information as well. Uh, so more to come on that. But um, just to uh, usher in the new the coming uh, session. So we've got that approval. Uh, we just had an online meetup this past Tuesday to go over some of the project ideas. Uh, we're gonna have another one um, either Next this coming Tuesday, Tuesday or this, it yeah, is definitely this Tuesday, Bruno. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, cool. So we'll have another meeting this Tuesday to go over the other ideas. Um, mentors will be there to help provide some insights there. Uh, yeah, anything else on Google Summer of Code to note right now, Bruno? No, we have quite a few contestants, I would say, uh, potential contributors. So there is a lot of activity on Gitter and even on uh, community.jenkins.io. That's a joy uh, to see so many young people wanting to contribute in a way or another. Um, I think we have something like 11 projects uh, to these days. Uh, in fact, these are not projects, but just project ideas. And then we'll uh, receive the proposals from the potential contributors and then we'll assess them. And in the end, we will know how many projects we will keep. If ever we manage to uh, mix and match contributors, mentors, commenters, <laughs> everything. So it's not over yet. So if you're watching this uh, video, 
please have a look at what's going on on um, community John Jenkins.io on Jenkins.io itself on the documentation website because the ideas are exposed there and on Gitter, why not? So yes, welcome to the party. Great, thank you so much, Bruno. Uh, yeah, and it's just, it's really exciting time. We're getting ready for all that. And uh, now that we've got the official organization acceptance, it's, yeah, it's just a matter of getting everything, all the pieces together for the rest of it. So fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, housekeeping note, so um, Docs Office Hours Asia, uh, the next one is going to be on March 15th. Uh, so to, it is canceled for later on today, uh, this evening, tomorrow morning, whatever it might be for you, uh, the March 1st session and the March 8th session. So um, for the next three sessions, Asia Docs Office Hours is canceled. Uh, Mark will be away. Mark is away. So uh, there won't be uh, an available host at that point. Uh, next up, so the Jenkins Community Awards have been announced. They're, um, the nomination period is just closed. Uh, they were opened until uh, February 19th, which was Friday, if I'm not, or no, that would have been Monday. Uh, so they were open until Monday. Uh, we've got uh, plenty uh, of contributor and advocate nominations. So um, just thanks to everyone who nominated someone. Thanks to everyone that's been nominated. Um, you wouldn't have been nominated if you hadn't done some kind of work for uh, or contributions to the Jenkins project. So just great, great, great uh, to see all the efforts and work being uh, noted, appreciated and highlighted and uh, frankly um, celebrated like they should be. Uh, it's just great to see the community coming together for that. Uh, so voting is actually open starting today until March 22nd. So uh, for the next month we have, we can vote. Um, and they, you can vote in the, any of the uh, pinned issues. So if you go to Jenkins.io and go to the issues, the three pinned issues here are the three uh, community awards. And you can vote by going in, finding a nomination here and uh, clicking the little icon here, the thumbs up, or there might be a rocket ship. There could be any number of um, emojis, definitely just Pick one, vote, make sure we're gonna, it, it'll most likely end up being that this number here is counted towards uh, the, whatever the highest number there is and that's the winner of the award. Um, you can vote as many times as you want, technically speaking, because you can click multiple emojis. Um, you can vote on every of the every one of the awards. You don't, you are not limited in any sense in that way. Uh, and there's also the overall CDF awards. Um, that's something that you can also, you can vote for any of these as well. Uh, and it's the same process for the CDF awards themselves. They've got an issue, you go in, react with an emoji and you voted. So over the next month, take a moment when you have time, check out the CDF uh, awards page itself. Uh, we have an announcement blog post in the Jenkins.io blog. And again, the issues are pinned in uh, the Jenkins.io GitHub repo. Take a moment, vote share your appreciation and show these people that uh, their work matters. Next up, there's the JIRA upgrade for issues.jenkins.io. Uh, so this is something that's been um, put out. Uh, this is something that's been discussed in the governance board. So uh, this is a page that's available on the Linux Foundation site. So it is out there in the public. Um, but on March 12th, uh, to the 13th, the Jira, there's going to be a Jira upgrade for issues.jenkins.io. The site will be unavailable during that time, um, but we're hoping that it shouldn't affect too much in terms of downtime. Uh, it's supposed to only be a couple hours, a few hours, so it shouldn't be disruptive. Um, that is, of course, best case scenario and provided nothing, nothing interrupts or causes a problem. So uh, ideally, it's only going to be a few hours long. Otherwise, uh, that status page will be updated accordingly. And um, I'm sure we'll communicate that out somehow. On the version documentation site, the uh, alternative build tools for Jenkins.io. Um, so we've been, this has been uh, a constant discussion that we've been having for some time now. Um, it was delayed a little bit from going into, from being pushed into production due to Azure cost saving measures. So um, that's still being worked on. That's a higher priority at this point. So. Once that's addressed uh, in a or in a better place, uh, we'll come back to pu pushing this towards being uh, part of the live infrastructure. Um, but right now we're reviewing, we're making sure that everything works appropriately on the docs, the version docs site. 
Um, and then uh, just this week, Chris Stern and myself were able to meet with Daniel Beck. Daniel's part of the Jenkins security team for anyone that's not aware. Um, but we also want to make sure that their needs are met as well. Um, while the version doc site is great for users in terms of the documentation, tutorials, et cetera, et cetera, security advisories and security as a whole is a large part of the Jenkins uh, documentation and site. So uh, Daniel wanted to make sure that uh, when, when moving to the version site, we're not going to have any sort of um, de degradation in quality in, in terms of publishing security advisories, in terms of the uh, load response time, and in terms of a lot of the back end stuff that um, I just personally didn't have the answers for. So I uh, met, we met with Chris as well, who's been able to provide insight to a lot of that stuff, and more importantly than anything else give reassurance to Daniel Beck and the security team to let them know like why this is a good move and what kind of um, benefits they'll see from it. So um, I think one of the uh, things that we talked about toward the end of the session was how long it takes from him um, pushing a commit and how long it shows up on the site. And it's like eight minutes or something. Um, mm -hmm. Gatsby and Tora, uh, that's going to be cut in half, uh, realistically speaking, just the power alone. Mm -hmm. It's or go ahead, Bruno. Sorry. No, 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 sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt. Oh. Uh, I would just to say that's interesting. Getting have the time of the generation, that's pretty cool. Yeah, from our and, and now that's you know that's a rough estimate. That's not um, something that we did right there in the session to, to prove. But um, Chris is saying that you know roughly three to four minutes instead of eight minutes is what they were seeing with their testing and everything. Um, the specific action that Daniel was taking, it might you know go through a different process oh, steps yeah. something something might be a little different about that so uh it's tough to say if that would exactly be the case but even if it's down from eight to six or like eight to five even if it's not fully half that's still a lot faster than it was and um you know the the main concern for security is obviously making sure that the user gets the information as quickly as possible so anything better than eight minutes is a win in that case uh, you know yeah, uh, as long as it wasn't was... slower yeah, I was also thinking along the lines of time is money. And it's true for Jenkins because the minutes that we're using uh, in the cloud cost us some money. So uh, if we are faster, <laughs> it's better. <laughs> Definitely. So, yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, uh, thanks so very much to Chris Stern and Bandit Singh for their work on the version doc site. Um, thanks to Chris for being able to meet with us yesterday. Uh, and just being able to showcase the the version doc site and what benefits that will bring to mm -hmm. other parts of the um, the project beyond just documentation. So, thank you very much. Uh, and then uh, Daniel Beck actually had an interesting idea. I I put it in here because he did submit it as a pull request, but um, he suggested having separate pages created for um, basically when a change log is created instead of there being an anchor link that goes to the full change log having a separately generated page for just that change log entry so that if someone links to 2.440.1 they don't need the rest of the change log they just want to have that and um, okay. right now the way it's working is you set the link and it brings you the full change log so the whole thing gets rendered um, his suggestion was instead of that having something like this where it's literally just that version change log it's a lot more focused experience. It gives the user exactly what they're looking for as opposed to the noise uh, above and below. So I think it's a really neat idea and I, I can see exactly why this would be value and appreciate the simplicity and like the directness of it. Um, and for all intents and purposes, I think that makes a lot of sense for the change log and for what people are potentially using it for. Um, it's not gonna be a coverall answer and it's not going to necessarily be the right solution for every single case or every usage but i think it's a great idea and it's uh it aligns with something else that um daniel had mentioned which was uh creating a separate page for like each security advisory as in, a, in a kind of in a similar vein where they wouldn't have to necessarily have one longer page for all of the advisories at that might be getting discussed at once so mm -hmm. um yeah, if the if Antora, if Gatsby can handle this sort of thing, I think it's a really good idea. Any thoughts or feelings on the first impression, Bruno? No, I'm on the same uh, line of thought. Uh, that would be cool. That won't answer each and every um, 
kind of question people may have when they want to use the changelog. But if it's uh, cheaper, faster, and it answers, um, it's a response to a, an issue that people are um, dealing with nowadays, that's cool. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, no, thanks to Daniel again for um, asking questions and ha and sharing the uh, thoughts and concerns about this sort of stuff as we're getting ready to um, push it forward. It's good to have that insight and we want to make sure that the security team is fully on board with all of this. Of course, um, they're going to be using it and we need to make sure that security and everything is very clear and consistent uh, and available for everyone using Jenkins. So. Um, yeah, just thanks again to the security team as a whole for all their work in general and for working with us on this. Next up, the Maven and Python tutorials. Uh, so again, these have been revamped thanks to Bruno uh, integrating Docker Compose instructions into them. Uh, thank you so much for all the work on that, Bruno. Uh, right now, he's working on the Node.js tutorial. So that one's been submitted. I need to go and review that. Uh, and then once we get through this, we're going to, uh, well, we'll have to partner up and uh, Bruno will show me a little bit of what yeah. I need to do so I can that incorporate that into the installation docs for Docker. Um, the ultimate goal is to have the Docker Compose integrated into the documentation as a whole. So uh, the tutorials are a great place to start. It's uh, lower, less invasive than the installation docs. So that's um, the big step there. Yeah, uh, and it's definitely useful. Uh, this week on Gitter, there was one user who was having trouble uh, starting Jenkins with Docker with the official documentation. And I asked him if he could try the Maven tutorial just in case uh, that would help him getting started. And he tried it and it worked <laughs> for him. So he's now up and running and he will be able to work on the weekend because he knows nothing about Jenkins. But now he has a working Jenkins instance with just one git clone command and docker compose up minus d maven. Bam, it's working. And frankly, um, it's heartwarming to know that what we're doing is useful to some people and will help newcomers in the Jenkins community. Um, before tackling with um, a main installation tutorial for Jenkins and Docker, because this one may take us quite a lot of time, there is still one tutorial to work on, which is the multi-branch pipeline. So I should start it tomorrow. And then whenever you and me have some time in common, we will work on the um, uh, installation of Jenkins through Docker tutorial. We'll do what we can. <laughs> Yeah, and I figure at this point, Bruno, the you know this, uh, I you know I put eventually here for the Docker Compose yep. because I don't think it'll be something that happens prior to April. Um, of course. So uh, yeah. there's a lot going on in the next few weeks between Mark being gone, I'll be gone for a little bit. Um, just other things that are happening for everyone. Everyone like there's a lot of stuff going on. Google Summer of Code no is worries. ramping up. So yeah, yeah. Um, no hurry. It, yeah, it's an eventual uh, project, but it will it will happen eventually for sure. Yeah, someday. Yeah. Uh, next up, so the password reset for admins. This is something that we talked about last week. Uh, I've reviewed everything looks good. The steps work. We merged that, so we now have the password reset instructions uh, for administrators in the Jenkins documentation. Um, thanks to Shridhar for putting that together and submitting that. And then uh, last thing on the agenda is uh, the sponsor attributions page. Um, discussions ongoing here. Nothing's really changed since the last we spoke. It's an ongoing uh, process and uh, work. Basil Crow's created a draft uh, of this and he's still working on that. Um, we just needed to get some uh, better details about um, things like monetary donations versus services that are being donated. Um, what those kind of stack up, how those stack up against each other, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but Basil is going to be continuing to work on that. Um, DigitalOcean has been donating for 2023 and has donated for 2024. So uh, they should definitely be visible. AWS has uh, donated $60,000 of credit towards Jenkins, which is amazing. Um, so we have a lot of sponsorships and partnerships that we want to highlight and make sure are attributed correctly and appropriately on that page. So 
more to come on that. Um, thanks to all of our sponsors constantly providing us with the means of uh, keeping the lights on for Jenkins and uh, pushing forward with Jenkins, keeping us on the cutting edge of everything that we're doing. And so yeah. just thank you very much to all of them. Go ahead, Bruno. And we now have another kind of sponsor. I don't know if it's a new category or something, but as you may know, Ampere has given to the Jenkins project two ARM64 servers. Um, so I don't know how this kind of donation will sweep in the existing categories or if we should create another category. Time will tell. Yeah, that that's a, that's a good call out, uh, Bruno. Uh, we do, is that now, for clarification, is this a new sponsorship as as like as of the server donation, or is that uh, have we been working with Ampere for a while now, and this is just a different kind of uh, sponsorship that they're providing? No, no. In fact, it's the first time we've ever been uh, working with Ampere. And when I say donating, that's not really the truth. Uh, it's some kind of loan, uh, but without an end date. So, <laughs> yeah. We could okay. uh, use them as long as we want to. Um, so it's not really a donation in itself. I don't know the exact term, but you get it. And yes, yeah. it's the first time in 2024. We've been discussing that for about a year now, <laughs> but um, the servers finally reached Mark's house. Wow, great. So yeah, that's that's cool. Just to highlight the the working relationship and the and the bonds that we're creating are showing results. That's fantastic. Yeah, they're cool guys. <laughs> yeah, they were, well, they were. Uh, I know that um, on the Sunday of Fosdom, the yes, gentleman and Mark Aaron were talking Williams a lot. Ampere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, if you see us, hello. <laughs> hey Aaron, thanks again. <laughs> Appreciate everything. Yeah. Cool. All right, so that covers everything that I have on the agenda for today. I don't think I left anything off there, and I'm pretty positive I covered everything that we yep. had talked about uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah, everything's good. So uh, on that note, I'll go ahead and stop the recording in just a moment. Uh, it'll be available 24 to 48 hours. Uh, and yeah, I'll see. we'll see you next week. Until then, take care, stay safe, uh, and reach out through community.jenkins.io or the Gitter channel if you have any questions about docs or Jenkins in general. Uh, you can find us there. Take care. And have a good weekend. Bye. Bye bye. Well, though. Uh, okay. No, I said that.